Hey, was the elementary lesson last week at Sunday school about humility? Uh Uh-huh. Those who boast are not liked the most. (laughs) You come up with that? Yeah, not bad, huh? So I've been thinking about it a lot. I know we're supposed to be humble, and mom and dad always say don't brag, but I feel like... You feel like, hey, this is the 2020s, the age of self-promotion, and if I don't toot my own horn, no one's gonna toot it for me. Okay, Leo, but yeah, I mean, sort of. This week in school and just hanging out, I noticed just how much my friends talk about themselves and... And your friends are a bunch of braggers, and you're sick of them? No, I really like my friends, but lately I've just noticed that most conversations aren't really conversations, but more like competitions. Like who has the most of this or more of that? Yeah, and I'm this and I'm that. I don't want to be a bragger, but I also want to fit in. I've been real quiet lately and all my friends think something's wrong. Well, you know what I think? Leo, I'm just venting, not asking for advice. I just need someone to listen and agree. Ugh, I'll never understand girls. Sorry, I'm just frustrated and don't know what to do. I feel like since everybody's talking about themselves, if I don't talk about myself, then people are going to think I'm weird or they won't even notice me at all. Type bragging into the history app. Hmm, fine. That is good advice. Attention! And whom do I have the pleasure of meeting? Leo and Layla, sir. American sibling time travelers, sent to warn you about Hitler and the Nazis. Hmm. You're a little late, son. Hitler was defeated years ago, and World War II has been over here in Germany since 1945. Excuse my brother, sir. He's being silly. But if you don't mind me asking, if the war is over, why are you and the U.S. military still here? There's no time to be silly, but good question. We're leading a campaign to rebuild Western Europe. World War II was so destructive and devastating that now, in 1948, these once powerful countries must be rebuilt from the ashes. We Americans are here assisting Europe with reconstructing in a way that emphasizes democratic government, capitalism, and freedom, things that have helped make our country so great. That sounds nice. We're actually here to learn about humility. I typed bragging into our time machine and it sent us here to meet you. By the way, who are you? I'm George Marshall. I was general during World War II and served as Army Chief of Staff. I no longer wear a military uniform because now I'm America's Secretary of State. I know what a general is, but what's a Secretary of State? The Secretary of State is chosen by the President to represent America to all foreign nations. So he has given me the job of working with the European leaders on rebuilding their countries. Wow, so that means all the people in charge of Europe are looking to you for help? Yes, it does. What should we call you, sir? Even though I'm retired from active military service, most people still call me General Marshall. That will work. Okay, General Marshall, will you tell us about your life so that we can learn why it's good not to brag? Hmm, I've never been one to boast or brag, or even talk much about myself. You could just order someone to tell us about you. You're probably right, Leo, but I... Excuse me, children, I need to take this. General, sir, Mr. Churchill is here to see you. Send him in, please. Winston Churchill? Prime Minister of Great Britain? Well, he is no longer Prime Minister. But yes. Hello, George. Thank you for meeting with... Leo. Layla. What are you two doing here? You know these time travelers, Winston? Oh, we're great friends. Most splendid. Yeah, we visited Mr. Churchill during the Battle of Britain. He taught us what to do when the going gets tough. I needed a shot of courage. That's wonderful. I would love to... Excuse me. Yes, Johnson? General, sir, we have a small situation that uh, requires your authority pretty quickly. I'll be right there. Since you three know one another, I don't feel too bad minding to this. Please excuse me. Smashing to see you again, children. What brings you to Germany during the height of the Marshall Plan? The Marshall Plan? Is the rebuilding of Europe named after General Marshall? He didn't tell us that. No, we're here to learn about humility. Oh, top draw, top draw. That time machine of yours is clever. What do you mean? Well, of course George didn't tell you that this entire massive project is named after him. He would never boast. That's been a main cause of his success. But I certainly will brag on the great man. 
There are few men whose qualities of mind and character have impressed me so deeply as those of General Marshall. That says a lot coming from you, Mr. Churchill. George began his military career as a second lieutenant of infantry during the Philippine-American War. He was a most valuable officer, but it was in World War I where his career really took off. World War I was fought over here in Europe too, right? It was. And in 1917, when America joined the fight, George was a captain and he shined brightly. At the Battle of Cantini, George planned the first notable American victory. Then, two years later, he planned the Meuse-Argonne Offensive, a victory that led to the entire war coming to a close. So, General Marshall is a great battle planner? Indeed. Perhaps the best. George is a military genius. But if you can believe it, it isn't what he's best known for, nor has it been the driving force behind his success and all his promotions. It's because he's humble and doesn't brag, right? George is a man of the highest integrity. He is always honest and he has never been afraid to tell the truth, even when the truth was risky. Because of these qualities, military leaders, presidents, and even prime ministers like myself have held him in high regard. So many times George could have taken all the credit or boasted of his many accomplishments, but he never does, and it is most impressive. Since he doesn't boast or brag, how have people like you learned about how talented he is? He lets his actions do the talking for him, and he is quick to compliment and praise the talents and accomplishments of those around him. Okay. Have you two heard of D-Day? World War II? Yeah, it's when the Allies, led by the Americans, stormed the beaches of Normandy, France, and began pushing the Nazis back. Top draw, Leo. D-Day's codename was Operation Overlord, and it was the largest air, land, and sea military mission in the history of the world. And guess who did much of the strategic planning? General Marshall! You got it! An American president, Franklin Roosevelt, and I wanted him to get credit for the operation and gave him the opportunity to lead it. But he told us he didn't need credit and just wanted to serve his country in any way he could. My apologies, friends. What did I miss? Mr. Churchill has been telling us all about your military accomplishments. Why didn't you want to lead D-Day and get all the credit? You deserved it. You could have been super famous. I've never been concerned with fame and credit. I just want to do the best job possible and serve my country. By not leading D-Day, I was able to remain in Washington, D.C. and help the president. I might have been more famous if I had led the battle in Europe, but it was probably more valuable for overall victory that I stayed out of the spotlight and focused on the planning. Children, George is a true team player and it didn't go unnoticed. When you let your actions speak for themselves without bragging or trying to grab the spotlight, it is most impressive to your peers and superiors. You may feel like you need to speak about yourself to get attention, but you don't. People are always watching. I will admit, I do think my career and my life have benefited from never boasting or bragging. It's the reason you're leading this most important mission and why your name is on it. See, children? Because he is an honest and humble man, General Marshall is respected by all types of people, regardless of politics or religion. Thanks, Winston. General Marshall, so my friends talk a lot about themselves and do a lot of bragging, but they're my friends and I really like them. What should I do? Leo, is your sister talented at a lot of things? Oh yeah, she gets good grades, is popular, nice, and a good athlete. Just as I suspected. Ah uh, yes. The presence of one with many talents can bring out insecurities in others. Children, oftentimes people who boast are actually very self-conscious, and they brag because they are unsure of their abilities. Agreed. Layla, next time you're around your friends who often boast, pay them compliments and bring attention to things that they do well. Really? I suspect it will raise their confidence. They won't feel the need to brag, and you'll probably even get compliments in return. Smashing advice, George. Good form. And take it from me in my life. If you are humble and let your actions speak for you, people will want you to succeed, will help you get promotions, and will want to be your friend. So true, George. And those who boast are never liked the most. Thanks, General Marshall. I really appreciate your advice. Staying humble is definitely the way to go. And I'll try and give more compliments so my friends won't be self-conscious and feel the need to brag. Good luck with the Marshall plan, General Marshall. It was nice to see you again, Mr. Churchill. Thanks for telling us about the General. Always a pleasure running into my favorite time travelers. Until we meet again, old chap. Goodbye, kids. Goodbye, kids. 
If you'd like to time travel with Leo and Layla again, please visit PragerU.com slash kids and watch more of their adventures. Thank you for watching this video. To keep PragerU videos free, please consider making a tax-deductible donation.